Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can we have your attention, please? Yes, sir. We're ready to start. First of all, we'd like to thank you all for coming out this afternoon. And my task for the evening is to introduce your mistress of ceremony for this evening. The person that I am introducing is no stranger in the community. She has her bachelor's, her master's degree, of course, some more certifications that I will not go into. She is an educator and a retiree with the Clinton County School System for over 40 and a half years. She is a lay servant, a Sunday school teacher at Trinity United Methodist Church under the great leadership of pastors Eddie and Emma Moore. She also is an entrepreneur at Montgomery's Food Mart, located here in Mark, Mississippi. And she has been that for over 28 years, which she now has a new building. Those in the community, let's give her a hand. She is also a member of the Laboring Sewers Club. She's an advocate for children in the areas of education, religion, respect, and those that may be of family and love them. She has cared for several, several children, even though she has three, but she's adopted several. Um, and she's opened her doors for others to come and stay, and she still does that right today. I will not go long presenting your mistress of ceremony for the evening. She is none other than my grandmother, my motivator, sister, Mrs. Ruby L. Montgomery. Let's give her a hand. Tonight, our weapon will be done by 
Jeff Dillon. And the scripture will be done by Alex uh, Smith. And our prayer will be done by none other than the Reverend William on the scripture. So we're going to have him back on. And uh, after that, then we will have the sermon of the group. And we'll get back into uh, his speeches for tonight. So let's come in there.
to all of y'all that put into this program. Thank you. The straight call, I want it to be a little bit different from what you uh, might have participated in the past. We're going to bring people in, and they're going to talk for an hour or whatever, interact with the kids, but when they leave, they're not just going to leave. It's more than just talking. It's being able to back it up and for these uh, kids to see this person really cares. Cares enough to give their time. And I'm going to start that off tonight by leaving my business card at the front table with my phone number on it. And I, I don't probably have enough for everyone, but I want all of you to try to get one of these cards and put it in your pocket. And if you ever need to call me, you just call me. And, uh, and if you don't have enough to go around, then it's not my number, but I'm here for you at any time, and we're going to do what we say around here. We're going to walk the wall.
you know, a while back. I've been in commercials. I've been called by the Oprah Network. A lot of different things. And nothing brings more pleasure than coming here when you have youth involved. It just don't. No, nothing beats that. Nothing I have done can talk. Put somebody, so a youth mind at ease about where he can go. I've trained guys. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm known as a speed trainer. I'm a fitness trainer, but I'm a speed trainer. I'm a speed guru, as you call it. You know, I've trained guys like Daniel Thomas, who's the running back for the Dolphins. I trained, you know, I'm going to tell you about Trail Kim and stuff in a minute. I trained uh, Mike Landry, who's with the Tampa Bay Storm. He just broke all the, part the kickoff return record for the Tampa Bay Storm for Arena. Then Jordan Barnes of the New York Yankees. Uh, Alan Blackwell, who I just, that's why I was texting earlier, he's actually just made the USA skeleton team for the Winter Olympics. He competes tomorrow in Germany. So that was me him. We were texting back and forth, making sure that when I had told him on what we trained, he remembered what to do and go through it. Being not familiar with skeletons, which when he first came to me and moved to Mississippi, he moved to Mississippi to train with me to make the USA team. Because he believed in me, a Mississippi boy, that I could train him and send him back to make the USA team. And it happened. But I'll give you a little history on what skeleton is. Skeleton is like a one-man sled. They put their foot here against the board for a start. You have 30 meters, it's about 42 yards. To push off that board with one hand on the sled and you push it as fast as you can go and you dive on that board and you go through that tunnel by 95 miles an hour. My job was to make him the top three fastest guys in the United States of America from this point to that point on ice. Now you look at that man that can't even roll a skate. I definitely can't ice skate. I don't like the cold. But he come to me saying, I believe in you. Just like this man right here. And this man right here. And these people right here. They're looking at you because they believe in you. You don't know. You don't know what you got yet. You feel, you think you do. But I'm here to tell you, just like Alan believed in me, to make that team, these people right here believe in you to take them to the championship, go to college, get your education, come back, get back to the community, and then come up here one day and speak at the athletic banquet for the youth. You're going to do that. But I believe in you. Another story. Guy named uh, Drew Bush alone. I knew him in high school. I trained him in high school. Football player, private school there. Pretty good, pretty good ball player. Wasn't nothing great. Got a phone call. Drew had a tragic accident. Drew was bush hog. Somebody's land working. Hit a big bump or whatever it was that fell off. Push off, cut off both his legs. Just so happened, a uh, um, garbage truck with inmates up on there saw, saw him out of laying in the field. They went to help him. Inmates. They went to help him. Drew lived, I hadn't seen him in a while, so I was in the gym working out. Drew's in a wheelchair. Drew rolled up to me. And I said, What's up, Drew? He said, I've been thinking about something. He said, I want you, I want you, I want your help. So whatever you want me to do, you know, you've been through a lot. He said, I want to go to the Olympics. He said, hear me? He said, I want to go to the Olympics, the Paralympics. Do you think I have a chance? I said, I said you train all athletes. I said, 
Let's do it. He said, what time do you got excited? What time you want to train, though? What time you want to train? I said, tell you what, I was, I was just testing it out. I was testing it out. It was dark. I knew it was going to be dark at the track. I said, meet me at the track. I got to be at work at 7. Meet me at the track at 5 o'clock in the morning. Because he, you know, he can drive his truck and all that. I said, meet me at the track at 5 o'clock in the morning. He said, you going to be there at 5 o'clock? I said, Drew, if you want to train, meet me at the track at 5 o'clock in the morning. So I get up at 4, so let me go out here to this track. You know, if he ain't out there, I'm just going to leave and go to the you know, gym and get a little workout in. So I pull up at the track. Sure enough, I don't see Drew. I'm like, hmm. I park my truck. I get out. I'm looking at the track. I'm like, I'm going to give him a little time. Well, by the time I got ready to turn around, on the other side of the track, I seen some light blinking. It was Drew. He was sitting over there the whole time. Because <coughs> he couldn't park where I parked. He had to park where the other gate. I wouldn't think. I go around to the track, well, across the field, and he said, Coach, can you get my wheelchair out the back? Yeah, I got you. He got a, he got a, it's dark, we can't even see nothing. I said, Drew, what event you want to do? He said, I want to do shot put. I want to do the discus. And he said, I don't know if I got, I don't know if I got the right equipment enough to do the do the hundred. He said, I want you to train, train me speed training. <clears throat> okay. No problem. Well, I made a new blast the uh, warming up. We got a little light. We went over to the the shop area, the disco area. I said, hmm, I ain't never done this before. He's determined. So I made a party wheelchair crossways. I went to actually, we didn't even have a disc. I was just going through the motion. The next time he came back, I went and asked the coach at the high school, I said, Coach, you remember Drew Bush was on? He said, Yeah. I said, he wants to throw the disc and stuff. I don't have a disc. He said, what? I said, can we borrow this? He said, yeah, sure. Gave him distance. So I'm watching Drew throw, but his, he, remember he had no legs. So his body's almost coming out of the wheelchair. So I said, we got to fix this. So I get out of my video camera, and I set my video camera behind me. I said, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to lay down on the ground. I put one foot on the wheelchair, brace it. I had one hand holding him down here, where he had enough range of motion to swing back and throw. Every time he would throw, I had him come on the market. I get up, wipe it off because it's wet and dew, come back, give it to him again, get back on the ground. He throw it again, come back, throw it again. We went through this a hundred times, over and over again. This is what happened. One day we couldn't we couldn't work out in the morning. Time. Just when it, it, it didn't happen. So that do you gotta come in the evening time? He said, well, I'll come out there. It was during track season. Where everybody uses the track. So this particular day, over at the shop book district area, you had Independence High School, you had Rosa Ford High School, you had North Panola High School. Coldwater High School, uh, I don't know if I said independent, you had Magnolia Heights was out there, and Strayhorn High School was out there training. So here all these days, and Drew pulls up in, in his truck, and uh, of course, <laughs> they're out there throwing, throwing this and, and, and going on. So I really see how far they're going, I see what's fixing to happen. So Drew gets out and the guy, you know, back off like, Drew's like, don't, don't feel sorry for me. You don't feel sorry for me. I got this. <coughs> so I get down to the brace. There is a fence by the far as the door. These guys are throwing, oh, this girl right here is the chair. In the chair right here. So I get down. I said, Drew, just warm up. I got a point, point on the fence I want him to aim to. 
This verse is through throwing an old offense and I'm gonna sit somebody. And those guys were like, whoa. I was like, yeah, whoa. Well, Drew ended up going to compete. He came back very proud with all his gold medals and shot foot and distance. Then he said, Coach, I'm ready to speed train now. I said, what you gonna do, the 100, 200? So I'm gonna try the 100. Now you gotta remember, speed comes from upper body and lower body. You think? So here is the main part that you believe that those coaches, him, and all these people believe in you. You gotta believe in yourself. But you never stop believing. And what he can do. We got a wheelchair, a speed wheelchair. So I want to time him to hunt. So I said, well, what do you need to make the Olympics? He said, I need 18, I need to be down there in 18 seconds. All right, let's see what we got. He got it back in the road. So the wheelchair got a little wheel in the front, got two little wheels in the back. So he comes rolling, 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 rolling. He rolled by me and said, what I got, he put some brakes on. I said, that was a 22. And he rolls back. He comes back to me. Drew, slow, slow down. You, you'll get it. You'll get it. So I had to then figure out what's wrong. So I pulled, I actually got through. I said, Drew, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. You want to get those seconds off of you? You, you believe in me, right? You come to me. You believe in me. He said, yes, sir, I do. I believe in you. But this is what you have to do. You got to lose some weight. I'm going to help you lose weight. You got to lose some weight because the aerodynamics and speed works because the higher you have your nose when you're racing, the slower you're going to be because you put pressure on your spinal column, you put pressure on your glutes, you put pressure on your hamstrings, and those sensors will tell you to stop. So by Drew not, not being slim right here, he could only get down right here in his wheelchair. But if he was slimmer, he would be here. Thank the road. Long story short, Drew lost weight. Put him on program, lost weight. He went and got him gold medal and hundred. Why? Mississippi, 
who when I met him believed in his self. Okay? I believed in his self. He believed in his self. When I met him, he believed. And I enhanced that to believe. To make him believe in his dream. When I met him, he came to my, my camp. I didn't know him from anybody else. I asked all the kids, why did you come to run? What's your purpose? What's your reason? When I asked him in front of the crowd, I had him on tape. He said, Coach, I want to go to the Olympics. You know what I heard some of them say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is the seventh medal. This medal is worth $15,000 to give everyone to know what I got in my hand. His dad has never seen him race. His mom passed away when he was eight. But the first thing, everything that he does is give praise to God. If you ever get a chance to watch him, and you will, in 2016 Olympics, you will watch him in January, February when they start showing indoor track meets. If you watch him, they show him in the blocks. This is his routine. When he gets in the blocks, he's going to get in front of the blocks. He's going to get behind the blocks. When he get ready to play on your mark, he's going to get here. He's going to shake it out. Praise God. He's going to kiss his left shoulder right here because of the tattoo of his mom. Then he's going to run his race. That's his routine. Many track meets that we have left. We drove to Nashville, the track meets coming up and came back because of the trip. Why did we have to get back? Man, I got church. I got to go to church. Man, I can't miss no church. You know, you play the drums. I came down like, well, let's go. We'll get back. But the reason I'm saying all this is because y'all can make something out of nothing. I like to prove stuff. I got a little time. I, I like to like prove. I'm going to prove these young men right here. I'm going to take this sheet of paper right here. I'm going to be one by one on this paper. This, this, this paper this is a program I got nothing on the back, right? Y'all see that? It's not going to be magic. Just make a mark on the sheet of paper. Make that mark. Next. All right. Make a mark on the sheet of paper. Make it work. All right. Next. I'm going to show you something.
and they buried in your head that you're not going to be nothing. You got to believe that you are somebody. And with, with your teammates, and your back, and your practice, and your being out there, this is it. I, I can't stress it anymore because I deal with athletes, I deal with pro athletes. Okay? Steps in life, like going back to Trail Kimmins. Everyone know how want to know how do we get to be the fourth fastest time coming out the box in history. We're talking about Jesse Owen and Carl Lewis Day. We got the fourth fastest time ever recorded in history of track and field. Why? Because we do not believe in that old saying that you take one step forward and two steps back. We don't believe in that. So this is how we fix that. And we do it in life. I do it in life. That's how I wrote three books. That's why I got called, called by Oprah. That's why I'm supposed to be on the Steve Harvey show at some point in time, they say. I don't know. I don't know that I'm marching forward. I'm here in Marfield City where I want to be right now. So. For, me to take, for me to succeed in life, for you to succeed in life, it's not about the steps you take. It's about being accountable for the steps you take. So how we work, 100 meters is 110 yards. Right? Lay down. It's 110 yards. Average guy is 5'11", 5'9", 5'11", is going to take anywhere from 50 to 52 strides. Depends on how he set up his race. But before we can handle those 52 strides, we got to figure out that first step. Now, before we figure out that first step, we got to figure out every moment in that first step to make sure it's right. Because if that first step ain't right, those other 49 won't be. So we got some corrections. So we work and work on that first step. When his foot come off that block, that's a moment. That's a moment. Right now, if I was running, I'm already beat. <coughs> Why? Because my knee is too high. My toe is too low. But I'm just demonstrating. That's just part of my training. But when you take steps in life, be accountable for your step. Know I'm going to get my education. Mm -hmm. I'm going to college. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be somebody. See what I'm saying? Take those steps first. You won't go back. Until you decide, I'm going to go back and help my community. Okay, that's what you do. The trail I'm on that, that silver medal. And I watch them when they go to London, I mean, when they go to Rio, I plan on going to Rio with them. 2016. But when he was on that podium, when he was standing on that podium, and they had him, they put that metal around right his neck. The first time I saw him cry. And I knew why. Because he has put thousands and thousands of hours into getting that. And to be the first leg of the relay team, it takes four guys. This is the baton they pass around the track. He wanted to bring it to me. With all of them signing it, with the American world record, with the American record, he's wrote on here by the coach. Derek, Derek, boy, I want to coach, and Justin Gatlin and all of that. He wanted me to have it. He wanted to pass it on to me. I'm going to say that. Because, you know, I can go on and on and on. I'm going to bring trail cameras down here to meet y'all. I'm going to bring Jordan Moore from New York Yankees down here to meet y'all. I'm friends with Coach Dan, Coach Hugh Free from Ole Miss. What up, man? <laughs> I got some boys in Mark, Mississippi, man. They're clowning. You need to come recruit. That's what we do. Now, my, my, my 
training is in Christian-based training. Fine. Y'all can handle that. But I'm going to do whatever I can do to help y'all. And I am honored to be able to come down here and speak to y'all. And I hope I said something to help motivate y'all. I know one of those, I got just two before I got up with you. One of them, uh, when you said rap, one said, What's the rap? Y'all really want to rap? Y'all don't want to rap. I ain't got to rap. Really? You know how to keep it 100. I keep it 100. I keep it 100. I don't have a music with me. Do a little bit of what I do. I rap with kids. I rap with over 40,000 kids all over. My music is played in New Zealand, uh, Australia, Japan. Uh, I was just, I just got a call yesterday from uh, TI's manager who wanted to help me with some stuff. Uh, it's crazy. But uh, my video on YouTube, you go to I, it's on YouTube. But I, I'll, do, I'll do one verse. One of my songs, I didn't come to a rap. Because this is for kids, y'all. Adults, y'all just have to. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm used to, I teach fifth grade, seventh grade, so I'm used to dealing with a lot of kids. But, uh, I'm going to do a uh, big drug feature like I'm doing first verse. They call me double A. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Be quiet, man. All right. If double A speaking on the mic tonight, I'm gonna to bring it to you strong and bring it to you right up all the drugs out there in the world. So this is another close to all you boys and girls, no matter if you're from east up, west, north, or south, shouldn't be no no drug gonna leave your mouth like everywhere you turn, everywhere you go to be drug free. You don't have to say no now. At this time, it's great fifth of week. We all are special, we all are unique, deep, deep in your heart and deep in your soul. Don't try to do drugs. Just to be bold, say no to drugs and be free. You can be there working with all of you drug free like me.
And I'm going to leave you with this saying that my dad used to always say to me. He said, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. But if you pay off a loan, if you might not be able to pay off that ignorance stuff you know, so get your education. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all have me back. I'll come on the sideline and stand one day and represent. Thank y'all again for having me. I've had a time last night.
Okay, next we'll do the 49 cheerleaders, uh, Takaya Harris. David 
Señor, hermano.